So, I'm very excited to be today in Tokyo, the world tech hub and nerd heaven. I grew up in a small town. It was one of these towns that had one of everything. We had one main street, one school, one pizza joint, one bus line that took us to the big city, and one extremely bored nerd, and that would be me. I spent my time reading books and trying to watch something interested on the television, which of course had only one local channel. But one day, through some sort of signal mix-up magic, I came across a show that changed my life. Star Trek, obviously. And let me tell you, for a girl from a small town, the idea of being able to go where no one has gone before was amazing. But what really blew my mind was all these amazing technologies that were embedded in it, from telecommunication to teleportation, and of course, augmented reality. So I immediately came up with a plan a plan to join Starfleet. And I was a very methodical child, so I had a very solid three-step program. Step one, I realized that I need to acquire some skills. So I made my parents send me to a summer MS-DOS camp. Awesome. I figured out that once I graduate, I will of course be scouted by an HR person from the Federation and reach my third step and my ultimate goal, which was to meet Spock and possibly marry him. As I stand here today, I think it's pretty obvious that I failed with my mega plan, perhaps because I'm a terrible coder, perhaps because Star Trek is only a TV show, and Spock, he's not even a Vulcan. But what did happen during my lifetime is that all these technologies came to fruition. And we now take for granted real-time streaming, the World Wide Web, big data, cloud computing, and soon enough, virtual and augmented reality interaction. And this is the reason that I'm here today, to talk about the next interaction platform that we're about to encounter, augmented reality. So to avoid confusion, let me give you a little gist about the virtual continuum. I know it can be confusing even for people in the industry. So, on one hand, on the virtual continuum, we have physical reality. We all know physical reality. We're in it right now. It means having physical content within a physical space. Clear enough? On the other side of the spectrum, we have virtual reality. And that refers to having digital content experience within a digital space. That means that if we have a 3D digital game that we experience through a headset, that's virtual reality. In between them, we have what's referred to as mixed reality. And we have two core technologies that sit within it. The first, augmented virtuality. A lot of us refer to it as 360 videos. And what it actually does is it takes real physical world content and allows us to experience it in a virtual space. For example, if we have a 360 video of Mount Everest that we experience through a headset, that's augmented virtuality. And last but not least, the best of them all, augmented reality. And augmented reality allows us to have digital content that is experienced within our physical reality. And there are a lot of reasons why this is great. The first is that we know how to interact with this wonderful HD platform, and it has a social quality to it. But what makes me truly fascinated about augmented reality is the meaning behind this technology. To augment means to add, amplify, intensify, or elevate. To intensify or elevate reality itself. That's a great notion. This is why we started having technology to start with, to better the human experience, right? And this is my idea of a wonderful 3D space, this little sushi town where everything can be sushified. 
And that's a fantastic notion because it means that we will be able to add all these limitless narratives and information into our physical space. But this infinite and unknown space also has some challenges that we need to confront with. Even in technological hubs and startup focus spaces, we don't know yet what it means. We are busy in Amsterdam today to understand what will this third space be like, what it will look like, and how will it influence our society and our perception of reality. So this is what I made my life about. I'm touring the world and I'm talking to policymakers, content makers, and users in order to be able to guarantee that we'll hopefully have good implementation of AR because we all know how easy it is to create terrible experiences. So I'm here today to share with you some insights about how to spot the red flags when you're creating a bad augmented experience. So we start with the holy grail of startup and entrepreneurship, disruption. Now I know that every entrepreneur wakes up in the morning and says, I'm gonna disrupt something today. And disruption as a byproduct is fine. But when disruptions become the core purpose of creating a platform, it becomes a little bit problematic, especially when we talk about augmented reality. On a societal level, technology already shifted a lot of our behaviors and cultures. And again, this is fine. But what could possibly go wrong when we can disrupt somebody's actual reality, when we can hack into it a lot. So if you wanna make terrible AR, think about disruption first and think about being constructive later. But I'm cautioning you that the paradigm of disruption is changing. If we disassemble everything, we won't be able to build anything. And the quality of augmented reality is to build on existing experiences environments and behaviors. And this is a power we need to harness. Just do it, such a great slogan. But even Nike would tell you to lace up your shoes before you go running. So to just implement AR without understanding the impact it will bring is a terrible idea. So I urge you to just not do it. We already, ever, or we already overdid it with a lot of technology platforms and apps. We're creating endless digital noise. And we're relying on, relying on technology and all these platforms to tell us how to interact, to tell us what it, we're gonna do in the next hour or day, but we're also relying it so much, we lost our contact with ourselves. There are apps today that tell you you should drink water. There are apps today that tell you how often you should do sex and when in order to avoid pregnancy. Spoiler alert, when technology goes wrong, 37 women actually got pregnant in Sweden relying on one of these apps. So just because nobody did it, doesn't mean you just have to do it. And just because nobody did an app or an AR experience that has a farting purple unicorn on it, doesn't mean you have to do it. Now, God, don't get me wrong, I love unicorns, and there's nothing wrong with unsolicited fun. But when we create just for sake of creation, and we forget about embedding deeper meanings, we're not creating great AR experiences and sustainable platform. And we know the power of user experience and engagement. We've all been crazed with gamification, which is another word of I'll give you a lot of hooks to stay on my platform as long as possible so I can scrap your data. It's all fair enough if we actually give value to the user and we give them the choice to be on the platform or stay on it. But we all know it's not always the case. And somehow along the way, we told ourselves that technology is something that happens elsewhere that the rules that happen behind the screen are not the same as the real world, but we're seeing the repercussion of all this dark UX in our everyday lives. And users are trying to understand it and are starting to reject it. 
because users are more than the sum of all their data. They're not something to be experimented on. And what happens behind a screen cannot be experimented within a physical reality. This dark side might go very dark very soon. And within these mechanisms, we tell the users, hey, we're going to give you a simple one-button solution for everything, ignoring completely the complexity of everyday lives and human behavior nuances instead of celebrating it. Terrible AR experiences? fear complexity, and desperately try to override our reality. So I call you to dare to explore the fringe, dare to explore awkwardness, nostalgia, and complexity, because this is where the beauty of the human experience is. And while we create all these experiences, things go wrong. I love technology. I think technology is perfect because it does exactly what it's designed to do. The problem is it's designed by humans. And we're slightly flawed. And it's also used by humans. So we use things not the way they were intended. And when we design platforms and ignore the consequences and end up blaming the user for using it wrong, this is a bad business this is a bad human experience, and this is bad for humanity. Because we have the responsibility to create better technology. And once immersive technology will blend with deep data, artificial intelligence, gesture recognition, we're really going to create magic. And you know what? People believe magic. And as people walked off cliffs and into traffic using Pokemon Go, people will be immersed in the experiences you make. So you can't make magic without influencing everything within our physical reality. AR will be affecting the public, the public, private, and intimate space of every one of us. So we need to consider it while we develop it. We need to work with speculative design. We need to anticipate the consequences of what we're making. And hell is not other people. I know that Jean Paul Sartre said it, and I know we probably think it at least once a week when we go to the overcrowded public transportation or the area we're at, because society is becoming denser and denser. But the truth is, loneliness is hell. And even though we interact with dozens and hundreds of people a day or a week, we never felt so disconnected as we are now. We've never been looking for more meaningful experiences as we have now. And we can beautify our feelings online, but the truth is that today, loneliness became an epidemic. There are so many mental and physical issues related to it that in the UK, they actually appointed a minister of loneliness. And as we design for connectivity and somehow result in isolation, we have to realize that this makes a terrible experience. And there's a solution for it. Because physical humans cry, crave for interaction. Physical interaction actually makes us feel more connected. So we can develop simple mechanism in augmented reality. We can swap the screen swipe with actual interaction of environment and other people. And we can have very simple solutions to creating actual eye contact with other people. If we're going to break the fourth wall, Let's do it in a way that fits the biological way that we're experiencing space and reality. And I know that in the past few years, there's have been much ado about going to Mars, one Tesla at a time. And I'm not planning to move there anytime soon. And I understand that we feel the urge of leaving Earth because we kind of messed it up on all levels. But I have to refer back to Stephen Hawking's saying, which is, we are just an advanced breed of monkeys 
on a minor planet of a very average star. But we can understand the universe, and that makes us something very special. So I believe we need to deal and heal our relationship with this little rock we're on, with the other shaved monkeys on it, and also with technology and the purpose that it represents. We can try to embrace reality instead of trying to override it. So it's true, I'm just a girl from a small town, and it took me years to try to stop running away from the reality I was on. But I can tell you now that I believe that augmented reality can forge fantastic alternatives, rea alternative realities, but it can reinstate our relationship with reality itself and all the beauty it holds with complexity and with awkwardness. And once we identify the red flags, I hope we can avoid creating them. And I hope that we can move together as users, platform builders, as policy makers and adventurers to make reality great again and amplify the collective human experience rather than just replacing it. So I'm calling at all of you today to be the ambassadors of making reality great again. So please join me on that. And you, and you.